Hear now the call to worship. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Give thanks to the Lord and call on God's name. We will praise our God and tell of all God's wonderful works. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. We will give glory to God's holy name. Seek the Lord, God's strength and presence continually. We will remember God's mercy and justice in worship and praise. Now let us sing hymn 478, Praise My Soul, the God of Heaven. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he who is righteous and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Friends, the proof of God's amazing love is this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Friends, let us share the good news of the gospel. In, In Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we are Christ, forgiven. We are forgiven. Thanks, thanks be to thanks God. Be to God. Carolyn, are you doing joys and concerns? Um, I am. Are we moving on? Are we waiting for Kendo to do the uh, Gloria Patra? I'm sorry. All right. All right. This is the time in our service when we are invited to share joys and concerns. If you have something to share or would like to ask for prayers for yourself or others, please raise your hand and I will call on you. I am having a little bit of difficulty doing that on my phone screen, so I may need some help from one of you. Um, if you would like to type something in the chat, um, please, uh, Go ahead and do that, and Jim will read it. Does anyone have prayers, that, joys, and concerns? I'm going to scroll through my screen, and so go ahead and wave, and I will get to you. Anyone? All right. All right. Marilyn, Marilyn it looks like uh, Marilyn. Oh, all no. Right, um, Marilyn? No. It's actually Ann Scroggs. Um, I just wanted prayers. All right, Ann, forgive me. I have a very small screen. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I would like to ask for prayers for my sister Elizabeth. I, as you know, she's a physical therapist in a hospital in North Carolina, and she's been assigned to the COVID unit. And so she has a lot of protective gear, mm -hmm. and she's doing her job, but I ask... Uh, for prayers for her, and she also has some minor surgery on the 25th, kind of in the midst of all this. So um, just prayers for Elizabeth, please. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Let us pray. Living Christ. So many different people reached out to you in times of desperation with so many different needs. Yet you, yet, you, yet you had compassion for them all. Lord Jesus, we know both struggle and joy in our lives too. We set our hopes and concerns before you today. Fill us with your compassion as we pray. We pray for all that we are and all that we do all that we wish we could do, and all that we long for. We pray for everything we work for in our church and community, and everything we hope for in the face of so much change. We pray for choices we face in our country and community, in our homes and workplaces, and for all the responsibilities we bear in our different roles. We pray for the troubles that weary us, the situations that puzzle us, and the uncertainty that surrounds us. We lift up the joys and concerns the people and situations we carry in our hearts.
Living Christ, you are the source of peace and new possibility for us all. Help us trust in your grace for today and tomorrow. Fill us with the strength and hope we need to walk with you, united in your love. For it is as your loyal followers we dare to pray the words you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your be name. Thy, name. thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom thy will come, come, thy will, will be, done be done on earth as, earth, as, as it, it is in heaven. heaven. Give us give this, us day, this day, day our daily, our daily bread, bread, and forgive, forgive us, us our debts, our debts as, we as we forgive our debtors. Our debtors. Lead us not, not into temptation, into temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine, For thine is, is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, and the, power, and the, and the glory, glory now, forever. And forever. now and forever. Amen. Healing and freedom be shared in God's world in Christ's name. Please continue to submit your offerings by check or PayPal using the PayPal link on our Facebook page or the church's website. Shall we now join in the nope. Hang on, Barney, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. I'll yep. Okay, Cook can do the uh, doxology, play that. Barney. Oh God, we place our hope and trust in your loving kindness, leaning on you for all our needs. Because we want to praise you with more than mere words, we bring our gifts to support Christ's mission in the world. Bless those gifts and use our energy for your good purposes so that all the world will know your loving kindness. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Betsy. Betsy. The thoughts that distract us open our hearts to hear the challenge and the comfort you offer us in the name of Jesus Christ, your living word. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture is from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 16. Hear what the Spirit says to you today. If you put these instructions before the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, nourished on the words of the faith and of the sound teachings that you have followed. Train yourself in goodly godliness, for while physical training is of some value, godliness is valuable in every way. 
holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. For to this end, we toil and struggle because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the savior of all people, especially of those who believe. These are the things you must insist on and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I arrive, give attention to the public reading of scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy, with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Please put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them so that they may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teachings. Continue in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I thought I was having trouble. Good morning, friends. Can't hear you. Now we can't. We can't hear you now. We heard you up until you adjusted. Okay. How about now? Yes. yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. I have to adjust this. All right. Whew. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Happy to be in the sanctuary, but as you can see, it's a work in progress, and I'm a little sweaty. It's um, it's not perfect. Um, today is a special day because we are installing new officers. We had a congregational meeting a couple of um, weeks ago where new officers were elected and today we are installing them. And the scripture today from 1 Timothy talks about, do not neglect the spirit, the gift that is in you. And that's what we're doing today. We are not neglecting the gifts that are in us. We are nurturing them. And he gives a couple of um, instructions in this paragraph. He says, set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I arrive, give attention to public reading of scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. It's a pretty tall order, especially in these times, we tend to think people that exhort and read scripture in public and, and teach about Jesus or maybe got a screw loose, might be like a little bit is okay or in church is okay, but if you're gonna take it to a street corner, that's a little wacky. Well, you might've heard a quote that's attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. It's um, preach the gospel at all times and if necessary, use words. And so as Christians, as disciples, we should be preaching the gospel at all times. And when necessary, we use words. And we elect officers to lead us in discernment in spiritual discernment as well as sort of practical worldly discernment and the people that have been elected this year that we are going to install Betsy Stagno, Barney Lawless and Carolyn Bear 
have been recognized and chosen as people who already exhibit these um, spiritual practices. We have recognized a gift in them and we recognize their discipleship. And part of the reason that we choose role models, leaders, is that we need role models. We need to see um, how others do it and get inspiration for how we might do it. And when I talk about do it, what I'm talking about is living into our faith, growing as disciples, being leaders for Christ. And I want to point out the very first phrase in this paragraph. Paul says, let no one despise your youth. Now, when I read that, I thought, nobody's going to despise my youth. And I think for most of us in this congregation, uh, people writing us off because we're too young is not a problem anymore. But people write us off for all kinds of reasons. People write me off because I'm a woman. People write me off because um, I entered ministry in middle age. I don't have, you know, I'm in my 50s and I don't have 30 years of pastoring under my belt. But Paul's point is that whoever we are, wherever we are, as Christians, as disciples, we have value as leaders and role models. And just like the body of Christ, not everyone is a hand or a foot or an eye. We all bring gifts from wherever we are, whatever our experience is, whatever our viewpoint is. So I may not come to pastoring with Christ Presbyterian with 30 years of pastoring under my belt, but I do come with years of working in office systems, of um, becoming a mother, of herding cats, of um, working on nonprofit boards, and 10 years in seminary and other ministry. What are your gifts? What do you bring to your being in this world? What do you bring to your relationships with other people that are in your life or that you casually encounter in the grocery store? We are all called and we are all equipped. So let us not neglect the gifts that are in us. And now, this is the word of the Lord. To, to the one who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we could ask or even imagine. To God be the glory in us, the church, from generation to generation, forever and ever. Amen. And now we're going to um, move into installation of the officers. Barney, Betsy, Carolyn, uh, Jay, Jim, you all need to be unmuted. So um, we are installing Carolyn Bear as a ruling elder to the class of 2022. And we're commissioning Barney Lawless and Betsy Stagno as deacons for a year all of them have been ordained to these offices previously, so we will not be ordaining them today, but we will be installing them. I will begin by asking them the required constitutional questions, and then Elder J. Lowe will um, ask the congregation to affirm your support for their ministries. So everybody ready? Here we go. Barney, Betsy, and Carolyn. Do you trust Jesus Christ, your savior? Acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you? I do. I do. Do you accept the scripture of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal? and to God's work, word to you. Do you? I do. I do. 
Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church, as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you and will you? I do I and do, I will. And I will. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? I will. I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity? And will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? I, I will. will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? I, I, I do. do. Will you pray and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? I will. I will. Carolyn, will you be a faithful ruling elder watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love of Jesus and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. Barney and Betsy, will you be faithful deacons, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless, and to those in need, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. Members of Christ Presbyterian Church, Do you hear me? Yes. Members of Christ Presbyterian Church, we accept Carolyn, Barney, and Betsy as ruling elder and deacons chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ. Do we? We do. We do. I do. <clears throat> do we agree to pray for them? <laughs> to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of this church. Do we? We do. We do. We do. Well, let us welcome the incoming officers and acknowledge our outgoing officers, Ann Scroggs and Sue Ferguson, by waving our hands. <laughs> Yeah. All right, my friends, today is a communion Sunday. Well, I'll give you a second to get your elements together. I'm going to grab some hand sanitizer. So this is the joyful feast of our risen Lord. Scripture says that they will come from north and south and east and west to sit at table with our risen Lord. It is a joy and a privilege for us to be able to celebrate this feast together, whether we are in person physically or in person spiritually through the magic of electronics. We know that we believe that when we break this bread and share this cup, we are sharing in communion with all of the saints of every time and place, everyone who has gone before us, everyone who will come after us. And while it doesn't feel the same to celebrate it over I guess I can't say the airwaves, that's very old fashioned, but over Zoom rather than in person. We trust that God is here. God is here. God is there. God is 
wherever we are gathered in Christ's name to celebrate the gift of his supper. And so my friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all of your gifts. First of all, we thank you for creation, for your love that spilled over into matter and universe. We love you, we get, thank you for your gift of this earth, this perfect environment for us to grow and thrive. And we thank you for your covenant with your people Israel, Lord. We thank you that you didn't just create this planet and these creatures and then sit back and watch, but you stay involved. You walked in the garden among your first people. You came to earth and showed us how to be our best selves, even sacrificing yourself on a cross. And you continue to walk amongst us in your spirit. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Christ, for that ultimate sacrifice that put an end to our human sacrifices, our, our feeble attempts to try to bridge the gap between you and us because we cannot bridge it, you bridged it. And you gave us new hope, new instruction, new assurance that all who truly repent and believe are gathered back to you so that we can grow into what you created us to be. Lord, we thank you for this church, for giving our lives meaning through ministry and work, something to do, and prayer, something to think, and discernment, something to feel, that all of these different techniques work on us to bring us closer and clearer in knowledge of you. We thank you for the gift of each other so that we can continue as one loses hope, the others who have hope carry them along. And as one of them loses hope, hope reborn in others will carry them along. We thank you, Lord, that we are not alone. And finally, Lord, we thank you for your promise of your coming kingdom. We trust that your kingdom is creeping in here on earth and we are doing our, what, trying to do our part in making that realization complete. And we trust that when our work here is done, you will gather us back to yourselves, yourself, to, to give us fuller understanding, fuller being in you. And so Lord, we thank you that on the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread with his friends. He took bread and broke it and gave thanks to you and offered it to heaven. And then he said to his friends, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. And likewise, he took the cup and offering it to you, he said, friends, thanking you for it. He said, friends, this is the cup, my blood, poured out in a new covenant. Friends, as often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so my friends here today, we do take this bread and break it. We do take this cup and pour it out. And just as these grains, though many, become forever changed into one loaf, so we, though many, are changed into one body. And just as the fruit of the vine is forever changed into wine, so we, as children of God, baptized in Christ, are forever changed. And so, my friends, since Jesus Christ died for all of us, let us share the bread. And because Jesus Christ 
died for each of us. Let us share the cup. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gifts of the Spirit and the sacraments, that you are always thinking of us and you left these behind for us to sustain us and ground us. Make us worthy. Let us live into the power and the nourishment that your word and your sacraments and your Spirit give us. Let us be true reflections of your glory, to your glory. Amen. And now let us join together in singing hymn 357, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. does one plan to lead in a pandemic? How does one plan to lead with physical distancing, distance learning, and yes, distance worship? How do we plan for times like these? We don't. We just rise up and meet the moment. We rise up and meet the moment the best we can with the love of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. This is a task we always face, even when we are not in global crisis. So whatever the coming days, weeks, months, years might hold, let us rise up and meet the moment. Let us meet the moment with courage, creativity, and yes, above all, with love. And may the peace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Yeah. Echo? Echo for, hang on a second. I have an announcement to make. We missed at the top. Um, so you might have seen my email about um, John Kim, the director of the music ministry at, Christ, at um, Clifton Presbyterian Church. He's um, running a virtual choir and has extended an invitation to us to join. He's looking for singers as well as instrumentalists. Um, I've worked with him before and he's just a lovely, lovely man. 
Um, so if you are at all interested or if you have questions, please send me an email and um, or you know call me and I will put you guys in touch. And uh, benefit of um, participating in the virtual choir is that whatever music you create, we get to use. Um, and it would be lovely to see some faces singing again. So, all right, Keiko, please send us with music. <laughs> 